There are criminals who are flashy, showing off their money and often make headlines in the media. But there are also criminals that move in silence, keep a low profile, and only occasionally pop up on the radar. Edin G is definitely one of those. As probably one of the lesser known super cartel members, he certainly has not reached the same infamy as Ridwan Tahi and Daniel Kinahan. However, after building his billion dollar empire on the low, he has suddenly emerged as one of the biggest players in the game and became a crucial member of the super cartel. Born in Sarajevo, Bosnia, growing up in Brida, the Netherlands, he has remained under the radar for a long time. He is now in his 40s, but there is little information known about his early life. We can state that he is certainly no longer under the radar though. The DEA has Edin currently ranked among the top 50 biggest drug traffickers in the world. Well, let's dive into the story of Edin G, the Balkan Escobar. As the alleged head of the Tito and Dino cartel, Edin is thought to recruit members for his cartel within his own family. However, many members were also living in Bosnia and the rest of the Balkan region. This caused the cartel to be very tight-knitted. In terms of hits or feuds, there is little known about this in regard to the Tito and Dino cartel. It seemed as if Edin was smart enough to know that feuds are bad for businesses and avoid it as much as possible. The strength of the Tito and Dino cartel lies within their direct connections to the cartels in South America. It is said that Edin's cartel had a monopoly position in Peru, as nearly as all Peruvian produced coke would go to them. Besides his strong connections in Peru, he also cooperated directly together with some of the biggest cartels in Colombia. You know you are a serious player when you have a direct connections with the South American cartels. Over just two years, 14,000 kilos that had been seized were accredited to be from Edin's cartel. With the low catch probability in most ports, just imagine what actually went through without law enforcement knowing. By now, most of you have heard of the super cartel which was formed around 2017 and was based in Dubai. After Daniel Kinahan's wedding being infiltrated by DEA agents, it all became clear. Edin, together with Ridwan Tahi, Rafael Imperiale, and Daniel Kinahan formed an alliance together. Instead of battling each other for the top spot in the underworld, they bundled their powers together. Everyone brought something to the table. In Edin's case, it was his extensive network in South America and his near monopoly on Peruvian coke. It's safe to say that this alliance was more than successful as they would go on to be responsible for one third of the coke entering Europe at one point. If you are on the radar of the DEA, you already know they are about to investigate every single part of your life, even each family member or acquaintance. It was the DEA that tipped Dutch police in August 2018 to look into Mirza G, nephew of Edin G. Mirza was suspected to being part of the Tito and Dino cartel, with all the millions flowing in from the drug trade, it had to be laundered somehow, and Mirza was suspected of playing a significant role in this. Mirza and his wife had multiple properties on their names in Brida, the city Edin grew up in. Properties which were together worth millions. These properties were bought with loans that were nearly immediately paid off, which in itself can be deemed suspicious. It is suspected that Mirza was a money mover for his nephew Edin, buy properties with a loan, pay the loan off with drug money and repeat. Typically loan back constructions, which are very common in the underworld. Do that in different countries with different companies and under different names. And you have yourself a money laundering method called layering, which essentially leaves no traces or at least traces that are extremely difficult to track. In 2019, the police had enough evidence to arrest Mirza and his wife under the suspicion of money laundering. After raids in multiple properties of the two in the Netherlands and Bosnia, police seized a Ferrari, Porsche and Hummer, together with many other luxury items and cash. Mirza has always denied that he worked for his nephew Edin. And here is where the story takes a very sudden turn. In May 2020, Mirza actually filed a police report against his nephew Edin. He told police Edin was out to have him whacked, and they had a fallout many years ago already. A few days after filing his police report, Mirza was arrested, was this a coincidence? Mirza was a crucial link to Edin. If he had been whacked, this would have jeopardized the investigation into Edin, leaving a dead end, quite literally. Him sitting in a jail cell would mean that was unlikely to happen any longer. Dutch police later confirmed it was a coincidence. 
It has never been confirmed or denied if Eden actually planned to whack Mirza. It remains strange as to why he filed the reports. Meanwhile, Eden was still living and running his businesses in Dubai. Dubai had always been the perfect hideout for criminals. They were able to live in luxury, spend their millions without anyone asking any questions. And even more importantly, there were no extradition treaties. Many governments knew that the criminals they were after were living the high life in Dubai. This frustrated them and caused them to pressure Dubai's government into undertaking action. And so they did. The super cartel started to crumble with the arrest of Tahi in 2019 and the arrest of Imperiale in 2021. Edin and Daniel Kinahan, however, remain untouched. And here's where it gets fascinating. As part of Operation Desert Light, coordinated raids were conducted between November 8th and 18th, 2022 across the UAE and Europe. 49 people had been arrested as part of this operation, and once again, a major source of information for these raids were the intercepted messages sent from the encrypted phones. All these people were considered high-value targets by Interpol that needed to be stopped. One of those 49 people arrested was Edin. Just like that, he was arrested on the suspicion of money laundering, smuggling thousands of kilos of white powder into Europe and exporting 8,000 kilos worth of raw materials used to make narcotics. Another player of the super cartel had fallen. The Kinahans were now the last men standing. So it seemed, at least. After just two months, Edin G was a free man again. No bail, nor facing extradition, just a free man. How can a man of his stature and facing those kinds of hefty charges all of a sudden walk away freely? Well, till this day, that is still a miracle. According to the news reports released shortly after the news got out, the Netherlands took way too long to get their extradition paperwork in order, forcing Dubai to set Edin free. A spokesman for the Dutch authorities has denied this and said the paperwork was in order, but the extradition request was denied by Dubai authorities. He went on to say that they are currently investigating what went wrong. Was it the Netherlands' fault? Or did Dubai authorities have a hand in this? I guess we will not find the answer to that question anytime soon. Let me know in the comments what you think could be the case here. What we do know is that one of the world's largest smugglers is now a free man again. Talk about being lucky. It is unknown where Edin currently is, despite being internationally wanted. I think we can all agree that he knows exactly what he is doing and will remain under the radar for a very long time. Whether that is in Dubai or somewhere else, one thing is for sure. The Tito and Dino cartel are still in business. This was the story of Edin G and the Tito and Dino cartel, a man that built his empire in the shadows and managed to become part of the upper echelon of smugglers. It looked like his time was up, but he miraculously avoided the worst. I genuinely hope you have enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know in the comments, and I hope to see you in the next one.